Hi, I'm Molly, GiveGab's product marketer and fundraising enthusiast. This episode of Giving and Gabbing is sure to be a treat. Our special guest today is Maria Nieves, President and CEO of the Hudson County Chamber of Commerce. Maria and her team celebrated their third annual Giving Day, Hudson Gives, this past spring, raising over $651,000 for local nonprofits operating in Hudson County, New Jersey. The Chamber continues to implement creative strategies year over year to engage with new and returning donors and to maximize the impact that this event has in their community. In this episode, we'll be diving into how Hudson Giz has developed creative strategies for engaging their donors and participating nonprofits. Joining me from the GiveGab team, we have Larissa, our Senior Project Manager, who's been providing unparalleled support to our Giving Day partners since 2017, and who directly assists Maria and her team during Hudson Gives. Welcome, Larissa. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here and to hang out with Molly and Maria. Um, and so, you know, throughout the past few years, I've had the pleasure of seeing Hudson Gives grow um, and do a lot of fun things. And so I'm just excited to be here and chat with everyone. You know, Giving Day growth is definitely something that we love to talk about. So I'm excited to have both of you here with me today because I think there's a lot of opportunity for fundraisers to take their engagement strategies to the next level by hosting a Giving Day. Um, and so with that, um, we definitely want to kick things off by chatting with you directly, Maria. Um, and we just would love for you to share with us a little bit about the history of Hudson Gives and how hosting the Giving Day in your community really ties into your mission at the Chamber. Sure. Well, first, thank you, Molly and Larissa, for having me today. And I'm um, really excited about this conversation and the chance to share about what we've done in Hudson County, New Jersey. Really quick background, uh, because it is somewhat of a long story. I started at the Chamber actually 10 years ago. So 10 years as of this past Monday, November 1st, I started at the Chamber. Um, and I came from a background of community affairs um, and doing work with nonprofits in the community for a corporation I had worked for previously. And so when I went to the chamber, um, you know, one of the first things I noticed was that about 15% of the membership was in the nonprofit sector. And in fact, one of the largest employers in Hudson County is a nonprofit. They're in the healthcare or hospital. That sort of makes sense, I'm sure. Um, and so, you know, I also knew from my previous work that nonprofits in Hudson County struggled a bit to, to get attention for their various causes. If you don't know where Hudson County is, uh, our offices are in Jersey City. So you've been to our offices, you know that you can literally stand outside my office at the chamber and look across the Hudson River and see the amazing skyline of New York City. And so Hudson County is really, um, has a rich history, but part of that history is being in sort of the, the orbit of New York. And it can be a very challenging orbit to be in, especially when a lot of folks who move to the area continue their ties to New York City. If they're coming from New York, they continue those ties. So while there are a lot of Hudson County residents who are here for three, four generations, I've met some of these folks. It's always amazing to me. There are also a large part of the population that comes from New York City. And so they may not be as aware of what's going on in Hudson County. So one of the first things I did, I think within a couple of years of getting to the chamber was I convened a meeting of all our nonprofits. It was the first, what we call affinity group that we convened. Uh, we call it our nonprofit council. And we had that first conversation, you know, what keeps you up at night? What can we work on? How can we help? It took a few years. Um, I want to say it literally took like four years for us to get to a solution. But we did come upon the idea of doing a giving day. And so then serendipitously, I was able to form our Hudson County Chamber Foundation, a 501c3 in 2017. Um, and quickly after doing that, we were able to launch Hudson Gives as the first program under this foundation. Um, and we were lucky enough to engage with GiveGab as our technology partner, um, and the rest is sort of history. Um, I will mention that as a chamber, it is unusual for us to do this type of work, um, but we always couch this and try to educate our members that this is about growing the local economy for everyone. 
I love that you touched on, you know, it, it might seem odd that a chamber is hosting a giving day. And I think, you know, what's really unique about what you've done is you really sat down and you listened to what your community's needs were. And you developed and started building this giving day that could help meet those needs. And I think that's what makes giving days so unique is that they really are, they're usually created to really fill some sort of gap in a community and to really unite people together. Um, and it's one of the things that I think we love about our jobs at GiveGab is seeing how each of these days works differently. And um, I know you said that you you started you know, working with GiveGab and you've enjoyed your experience. Um, can you talk a little bit about the relationship that you've built with GiveGab and how kind of working with the project manager directly and maybe even leveraging, you know, the community of other Giving Day leaders has really helped you grow um, Hudson Gives? Sure. So, you know, as a small organization, we're very small here at the chamber. Um, it is sometimes hard to find the right partners because it's not like I have a team of people who can do all the due diligence. Um, but for this particular project, we actually did have a consultant work with us who sat down and she did a review of, I want to say something like five to seven different possible partners in this space, in this technology space. And she highly, out of, out of the entire group, she said, give Gab are the people I think you really need to speak to. And so I spoke with one of your sales uh, persons who I think was, at the time, she was based out of, I want to say, California. Um, we spent more than an hour together, and she didn't try to sell me. Um, and that was it. I was like, not only are they knowledgeable, not only do they only do giving days, because a lot of some, some of the other platforms, they do a bunch of things, but they try to fit it into this box. This is what you do. This is a core competency. So that also struck me as being highly important. Um, but I think it was that first impression of we're really here to build a relationship, which is so critical to me. And that I wasn't just, you know, being sold. I think I met with her in June. It wasn't until December that I felt confident enough to, you know, really sign on the dotted line, if you will, um, and then just move forward. And then, you know, Larissa was our project manager. She really sort of held our hands uh, through that first year. Um, that first year was tough. It was dealing with a lot of members of this community who maybe did not think we were doing the right thing, didn't understand what we were doing. Um, I always felt confident about what we were doing. And, um, but there were times where I was like, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Um, and so I really relied on Larissa for you know, what do other giving days do? What do you recommend? What have you seen that works? Um, so we learned a lot, a lot, a tremendous amount. And I really feel like the partnership is critical. Like we wouldn't be where we are today had we picked another vendor, had we not been able to develop the type of relationship that we have with Louisa and quite frankly, the entire, you know, GiveGab team. I will interject here, Maria. I don't want you to sell yourself short because your first year you came in and you knew a lot more than people who have done giving days multiple years in a row. So like a huge kudos to you and just the confidence that you came in with and the, the questions that you asked and just you had done your research really well going into the giving day. So you also made it easy for us to try. Like we had a lot of um, good back and forth strategy discussions and um, I really enjoyed all of our check-ins and our meetings, and I felt like you came so prepared. So don't sell yourself short. Oh, you, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> thank you for that. There, there was a lot of synergy, and we did do a lot of research. So thank mm -hmm. you for, for that. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. I I have to say, I've, I've worked with Larissa for a long time, too, and I, I agree with you. I think that's what makes GiveGab so special is that you really build these relationships with each other. And you know, you come in with this expectation and these goals that you want to achieve. And when you're starting something new, it can be really daunting. Like you said, hosting your first year, you know, with the giving day, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, you're going to hit challenges and you're going to hit bumps in the road. But I think what's, what's so specific and so unique is that you get this partnership immediately. You're paired with somebody or a couple people and 
you can run, you know, your goals past them and they can help you meet those goals. And I absolutely love that. I love talking to our partners that have done that. Having been a former partner, like that was my favorite thing. Um, and it just always makes me smile when, when everybody says like, oh, that first year's so hard, but at least I had someone, you know, there to help me through it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's and been that's a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. And I think one of our favorite things too is when, you know, the biggest compliment we can get is when people say like, you know, we felt like you were another team member of ours or somebody, you know, you were part of an extension of our team or what am I trying to say? Uh, you know, like you work with us. And so um, that's just the biggest compliment we can get when partners are like, oh, it just, it worked. It made sense. It felt like you were just an extra arm of our team, not a third party vendor that we hired. So that's what we needed to do. Yeah, I was I was actually going to say that, but I wasn't sure if I would be overstepping some boundary. No. That should, <laughs> you know, like have you in some box over here. Um, you know, I, I also share with our nonprofit partners that, uh, GiveDab is essential to this, this project that we're building over many years and that they should also use you all as a resource. So, you know, that that ethos that you have at GiveDab around really being customer centric uh, has been critical. Um, and there, you know, I think our nonprofits have gotten more and more comfortable working with you all as well, which does in fact make you sort of an integral part of the team without without me officially saying it. I guess I am officially saying it now. Okay. Yes. You say whatever you want, Maria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll just sit here and compliment each other back and forth. Yes, that's, that's what it's all about. about. Like, yes, building yes. each other up. Like. <laughs> so Maria, um, kind of thinking about how you've grown a bit um, and how your nonprofits have really grown to know give gab and things like that um i mean you just celebrated your third year you're going into your fourth giving day which is probably um you know mind-blowing it's probably how did you get here four years blew by um but really i would love to know how you feel your giving day has grown throughout the years and sort of how priorities and strategies have shifted and just kind of how it's evolved yeah so you know, I think back to that first year and our goal, I look back at some of our written documents and I think our goal in raising funds the first year was $30,000, um, which seems like nothing. But at the time was all that we felt confident enough to sort of put on paper because this was such a new concept uh, to the community. And what I really appreciate about what has happened is that you know, the community has really embraced Hudson Gibbs. Um, I think that it has gotten a lot of visibility. Um, I think it helps people to feel like they're part of something bigger in the community. Um, everybody can participate. It's inclusive of everyone. And we have a diversity of organizations with a diversity of leaders who are running those nonprofits who participate. You know, it only takes $5 to give. I think all of that really helps the community feel like they can own it. And to me, that's probably the most important piece of this, that while we may have started this at the chamber, we don't own it. Um, our nonprofits own it. The community owns it. And we're co-creating it. Like, I know that that's a word and a phrase a lot of people may be using a lot, co-create, and maybe... They know what they're saying. Maybe they're just using it because it's a buzzword. I don't know. When I say it about Hudson Gives, I truly, truly feel like of, of the many programs we have, and we have some really amazing programs at the chamber, this one is truly, truly co-created from the very beginning uh, with our members. And as we head into year four, you know, part of what I'm uh, challenging our steering committee, which is made up of um, many of the nonprofits who are members of the chamber who participate, I'm, I'm really challenging them to really own it this next year. And for us to build the infrastructure to ensure that it's sustainable for the long term. We've had great growth. Uh, we are, we're so excited by what we were able to achieve this past May, especially with the COVID environment that we've been in. Um, and we know that that growth may not, may not continue in the, at that trajectory. It will continue, but we're not quite sure how it's gonna look. 
And so for our purposes, we always want the community to feel like every Hudson Gives every year is a success. We've met some important goals and I wanna make sure it, it continues 10 years out. Like I want there to be a Hudson Gives 2030. You know, so that's what we're really focusing on this year. And I think beyond the fundraising goal, that big number, we're looking at how can we also teach our nonprofits to consider how important some other goals are, like engaging new donors and cultivating those donors and growing them, um, that we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that every new donor is a win, is a victory, and we need to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will sort of touch on the point that you made about how you involve your nonprofits. I will say you work with your steering committee really closely, like you've done a good job building relationships and maintaining relationships with your nonprofits, like you, um, the feedback that they give you and like even watching, like when you had your live stream and you had your steering committee on and just like how you all interact with each other and um, support each other and all of that is really evident and so I think that speaks volumes to how you've been able to grow this day so quickly in three years. The, the buy-in from your nonprofits is there and you've done it and you've done a really good job leading it. Oh, great. Well, you know, we also try to have fun. Yeah. I mean, we, we also understand that, you know, it's a giving day. It's about feeling good. It's about celebrating what the community does. There's no need to be super serious about this. Um, in a way that can be off putting. We want everybody to join in the fun. So we do a lot of fun things during our live stream, which always make me laugh when I think about it. So <laughs> I feel like that's what a giving day is all about though. Like if you if you can't have fun with it and you can't teach and embrace, you know, these organizations that are participating and teach them to have fun with their fundraising strategy, like it doesn't grow as quickly. And I think it's a testament to what you've built and how you've really like taken what you believe about the giving day and helped teach your organizations that same thing so that it's really a collective community movement. And it is, it's something that everybody embraces and it's beyond just their walls of their sort of like regular donor circle. It's about getting out in the community and finding those new donors and introducing people to an exciting way to give and a new way to give in a fun environment. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things we have done with our live stream the past couple of years, and Lisa, I don't know if I stole this from another giving day, what is our pet parade? And no, uh, this, this uh, competition that we have to find a mascot every year for Hudson mm -hmm. Gibbs. Um, and so we have people, and, and this goes to not just engaging uh, nonprofits, but engaging the community that support these nonprofits. And so, um, you know, we ask folks to, uh, on our social media, submit a picture, tell us why your pet should be uh, our mascot. And we got some really, really wonderful photos. And I, I wasn't completely a scripted, so we were mm -hmm. showing the photos, it was all ad lib. Yes. And I remember there was this one dog who looked like he was about to have pizza at a pizza restaurant outdoors with a you know, sort of checker cloth, uh, tablecloth, the red and white. You know, he's sitting at the table and like, oh, this dog's about to have pizza. I wonder where. You know, so we were just ad libbing and it was just completely hilarious. And I hope nobody was at all offended by some of the comments I made on their pets. It, you know, I'm a pet owner, I'm a pet lover. Um, we ended up with a fish as our mascot, um, Phoebus. And, um, but, you know, that to me is the, the, the most, in, you know, enjoyable part of Hudson Gives is, you know, it's not just about the nonprofits, it is about the wider community. So how do we, you know, open up our arms and embrace them all in, in this fun and engaging way. Um, and give, give residents of Hudson County and anybody who loves Hudson County a way to say, you know, I'm in this with you. I'm, I am part of that movement. It's interesting you use that word because we use that word in our advertising for Hudson Gives. Join the movement um, because it is a movement. It's like it sweeps over like these cities, these counties, these states. Like I see it all the time. And it's like, I think you go into that first giving day. You're like, yeah, we're hosting a giving day. Like it's going to be really great. And when you're on, you know, year three, you're like, Everybody knows what this giving day is. Everybody has it marked in their calendar. The minute 
the clock strikes midnight at the end of your giving day, people are ready for you to tell them when next year's is going to be. It's this thing that everybody looks forward to. And it's unlike any fundraising experience I've ever been a part of, like, you know, galas are very nice and they're fun. And, you know, it's a unique opportunity to support your organization, but I feel like they don't have that same level of energy and the energy that comes from a giving day. It really does. It, it creates that movement around your community and it's so incredible to be a part of. Um, and that kind of like brings me, you know, as you talk about how your community as a whole is getting involved um, as a chamber of commerce, you know, you are uniquely positioned to work closely with not just the nonprofits in your community, but also local businesses. And can, so can you talk a little bit about how you've been able to, you know, really engage local businesses in Hudson Gives? Well, beyond having them uh, participate as sponsors, uh, we've had one major sponsor who actually uh, engages their employee, employees uh, at their offices in Jersey City to give locally uh, during Hudson Gives. And then they do a corporate match. Um, we have another sponsor who uh, touches base with, I guess, their affinity groups. Um, as they have several at their firm, and they will choose five different nonprofits to give a significant sponsorship to for Hudson Gives. They've done that two years in a row. Um, so we're always looking for creative ways to do this. I have another potential partner for next year's that I'm going to be sitting down with um, next week to talk about um, employee engagement specifically, which I'm excited about. Uh, because I think that there's even more opportunities there to mine from an employee standpoint. Um, and I know that a lot of employees, you know, it can be a little trepidatious for uh, an employer to suggest, you know, participate in this giving day when a lot of employees have their own, they have their own causes that they want to support. Um, but I think that there are ways to do it that is not at all heavy handed. It doesn't feel, make employees feel like they're being told, you know, uh, voluntold to do something. Um, and our goal always uh, when we work with uh, potential partners is to really say, you know, it's about educating uh, employees who have a vested interest uh, in the region to learn about what the causes are. So, you know, we've, we've started, uh, I, I like to call them planting seeds um, and we're trying to grow it. And then also one of the things I'm thinking about is that as a chamber, and I think that this is something that we can uniquely do, part of our mission as a chamber is to educate the community around why, why business is good for the region and how different companies do good and make a great impact. So we're also thinking about for our presenting sponsor next year, how do we um, incorporate their story into this larger Hudson Gives story and you help them to use it as a platform for how they can tell the story about how they're, they're giving back to the community and making a great impact, um, which would marry these two things that we're trying to do that are critical to our mission. You know, in, improving our local economy for the nonprofit sector, quality, quality of life issues. And then also on the other end, um, you know, being an advocate for the business in the region. I love that. That's awesome. I, I hope it just works. like my 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 brain is turning. Like I get so excited because like when I hear you talk about giving day, I'm like, oh oh, and like that reminds me of so and so that's done this, and like oh, I've seen you know like this community you know engage their businesses as a sponsor in this way, and there are just so many unique and creative things that you can do um, to meet the needs of your community. Um, and I know that you guys do a lot of unique things in Hudson. Um, Larissa, I know that you slacked, you know, communicated with, you know, our internal GiveGab team, because Maria, you did something very special on this year's Giving Day. Larissa, do you want to share what Maria did as a challenge? <laughs> well, I'll give a little backstory because this was really fun because Maria and I were on one of our weekly check-ins and she says, Larissa, I have this idea of a challenge where I'm going to have to do something <laughs> if, <laughs> and people are going to get to vote on what I do, but it's going to make them donate because they're going to want to vote. 
And so <laughs> I was super excited about that. Um, and so you on your donation form this year, put a little question in that said, you know, uh, I, I don't remember what the phrasing was, but basically when people are checking out, they have the option to vote um, on a challenge that you had to um, accomplish. And so um, kudos to you for volunteering for that, because what you also put on there were not things that anybody would volunteer themselves for. I don't think like the ice bucket challenge, no one wanted to do that one. <laughs> um, and then you did a face painting one. And then I'm, I'm forgetting the, um, the third one. Oh, pie in the face. Oh, pie in the face. Oh, I, I voted for that one. <laughs> oh, Louisa. I know. Next year. I know. <laughs> Can I like rig it for next year? Can you just. No, no. <laughs> so that's actually a great example of co-creating. So I had a meeting with my steering committee and we were like, you know, our goal this year is raising $500,000. How are we going to do this? Like, how are we going to get this out there? How are we going to get people engaged in this? And actually, I should back up because the first challenge was, can we do a live stream for 24 hours? That was going to be the challenge. And if I could, then I, I forget what was going to be the... So then we flipped it and said, okay, really, the challenge is raising the 500000 And if you know, we get there, you know, what, what are you going to do? Like, it has to be something that will catch people's attention. So I did, I put it out there. I would do one of those three things, the paint, face painting, the pie in the face or the ice bucket. I am glad to say that uh, the ice bucket did not win by a long shot. So people do not, I, I would like to think that that's because I'm likable enough that they yeah. would have chosen that one. <laughs> Um, you know, that's all I can't, I can't surmise much more than that, but, uh, some, you know, pie in the face, I would have been happy to do that except for wasting food, but, um, you know, anything but the, but the ice bucket. So we did it. We did the face painting and it was a lot of fun. It was a mm -hmm. huge blast. <laughs> yeah. I remember you posting. Oh, sorry, Molly. Well, I was going to say, it's a fun way to kind of like be really public about, you know, one of your goals, you know, meeting that sort of $500,000 threshold. And then also like giving people the opportunity to like vote on it. It's like, not only did they feel like they were giving back to the community, but then there was sort of that extra secondary step of I gave back and I get to like now, now see something at the end of the day, that's just a culmination of feeling good about supporting my favorite organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I certainly hope that uh, people understand I have a sense of humor as well, um, that I'm willing to to do these types of things for the community because that's how passionate I am. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, the opportunity to uh, get to have the chamber president uh, do something poopy, who wouldn't want that, right? So <laughs> it was great fun. And we got some really wonderful local press on it. So um, it was all good. It was all good. And I think like something that comes out of that, that maybe you don't intend either is that people can put a face to like Hudson gives, you know, and a face to the chamber. So, I mean, a lot of your nonprofit members and members of the chamber know you already, but like donors got a glimpse into Maria and the fun and, you know, everything that you want the giving day to exude. So I think it was fun for people to watch that. And I think I remember in the video or the pictures of the face painting, like some of your steering committee went with you. So it was just oh, yeah. like, the human fun, like goofy, silly side of the giving day that people got to see. And um, I think yeah, that's I, really cool. You know, know I mean, I think in today's age with social media, where there's a sort of flattening of all of our lives, public and private, you know, like I'm on Facebook and people know me, but they all, I mean, it's hard to um, not be, the cha I'm still the chamber president on Facebook, right? And so we're all really, knowing a lot about each other. I think it's really, you know, maybe 50, 60 years ago, a chamber president wouldn't be caught dead getting a pie in the face. Um, that would just be like, what? Who would do such a thing? I'm such an upstanding member of the community. And, you know, there's an image, you know, I think a lot of that has gone by the wayside and people really want to get to know leaders in their community um, because an institution is really just made up of the people, right? So if you can't trust the people who are running it, that's that's problematic. So I, I really feel strongly that those barriers 
between me and, and my member, like there shouldn't be any. So thank you for, it just made me think what you said, Larissa, made me think along that lines. Those mm -hmm. things. Well, and I love that you had this creative idea and you were like, all right, so Larissa might think I'm a little crazy when I bring this up in our one-on-one, -on -one, but I love that our PMs embrace that and they get so invested in like, okay, yeah, let's figure out a way to like make this a fun challenge by, you know, adjusting your donation form or, you know, putting, putting that public out on your homepage. Like we love to embrace all of the ideas that our partners come up with and help you roll with it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing that a few Give Gab staff may have, may have donated just to vote, so. Yes, <laughs> you are very look, correct. You look up all the Ithaca-related, like, addresses and stuff you <laughs> voted mm -hmm. for. I mean, <laughs> Great, mission accomplished, though. Look what it did. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so going from this fun, you know, donor challenge, um, I was wondering if, you know, you could kind of speak to other unique ways that you've generated excitement around Hudson Gives and gotten the community involved that you found great results from. Yeah, so the past two years with COVID have been challenging. Um, and especially this year, because there's also fatigue uh, of the entire situation and environment had to be built in. So one of the things that we did, um, in addition to the pet parade, which I love, is we also do an annual, we call it now annual, even though we've only done it twice. Um, we do our New Jersey arts and culture um, trivia contest. And this is another, this is part of our prize pool. So we really look at our prize pool as not just opportunities for nonprofits to uh, be competitive, friendly, but competitive and, and win some cash, but ways for uh, donors to also get engaged and direct some of the prizes. Um, and so we do a New Jersey arts and culture uh, trivia contest, which I have a friend of mine create. That way, you know, nobody can say it's me directing any of the prize money. Um, and it's a New Jersey, not just a Hudson County trivia contest because New Jersey is actually a state that's very rich in arts and culture. We're right across, of course, as I mentioned, from New York City. So there are a lot of artists who are here from New York and they actually live in New Jersey. Um, and so we want to celebrate that. And it also ties to the fact that there are an incredible number of arts and culture organizations in Hudson County that participate in Hudson Gives. And this Again, it's connected to our chamber mission um, because we're a big believer that arts and culture are important institutions. We need to support them because they drive so much of our local economy. So we have fun, we have fun with it um, and uh, see who can answer these questions about local celebrities uh, who have done amazing things. Like a lot of people do not know that the author of the Game of Thrones series actually is from Bayonne. Um, which is in the southern part of Hudson County. And so that was one of our questions the first year of our Hudson Gives contest. Um, and we try to make them really hard because there are just some celebrities that people people know off the bat. Like a lot of people know that Queen Latifah is from Newark or Shaquille O'Neal is from Newark. They know those things. But they might not know that Michelle Rodriguez um, was in living in Jersey City when she got her breakthrough role in that movie about boxing that I do not remember. Uh, I will remember her from the Fast and Furious movies. I mean, I love those movies. Yes, I do. Who doesn't? I'll out mm -hmm. myself on, on that guilty pleasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we try to have fun with that. And to me, that, that continue, you know, it's really, really critical that we engage um, uh, donors, it's almost like doing the, the telethon that um, Jerry Lewis used to do ages ago. This is the new medium. We ha all have to embrace it and um, again, have fun with it. So any opportunities we can find to creatively engage donors in particular uh, is important to us. And to do it in a way that's not, that's really connected to the mission and, and allows us to have fun is important. 
you're making like my marketing heart sing because I'm like, oh my gosh, your media has to have so much fun with your giving day just because you have so many different elements that you incorporate and you have so many different ways that people can engage beyond, you know, getting on your website and giving. And I think that that's such a testament to how you look at the priorities of your community, how you listen to the organizations and, you know, what benefits they get from participating in the giving day. And that's just incredible because I know that there's, you know, there's so much happening. There's so many logistics going on when you're hosting a giving day, but you find ways to have fun and you find ways to create, you know, these engagement opportunities that are unique and so personalized to Hudson. Yeah, I mean, you know, as a chamber, we could certainly host a summit every year on philanthropy and giving. We have a bunch of nonprofits come and talk about their mission and have lunch, and do some networking, that would get really old really fast for everyone, including myself. So, and I, hey, look, if there are communities out there doing that, kudos to them. I'm sure they do it well. I would not know how to do that in a way that would be sustainable. So um, <laughs> let me back up and backtrack. We might need to cut that. But in any case, um, we're trying to have fun. And I, I feel like our giving day is that summit around philanthropy, but we're doing it in a way that's engaging and, and hopefully educating people when they don't even know that that they're being educated um, about what our priorities in the community. You know, so to me that that's just huge. Like the well, subject. there's there's nothing wrong with breaking the mold and being innovative and thinking, you know, outside the box. And I think that that's that's the future of philanthropy. Like, it, you know, we, I think we all sit back and we all realize that there are a lot of great models that fundraisers use, but there are a lot of things that have to change and a lot of ways that we have to kind of introduce this next generation to philanthropy. Um, and, you know, listening here and having this conversation today, I feel like you've already got some really good ideas in store for Hudson 2022. Um, so do you um, mind sharing with us um, a little bit about what we might look forward to seeing in this upcoming Hudson Gives? So I think for next year, we're going to try to do some sort of hybrid uh, giving day event where a part of it, or a good part of it, will we'll continue to be online uh, and live streamed but that we'll have some actual live venues that we live stream from that may be throughout the county so that we can start to really incorporate uh, all the different parts of Hudson County. There are 12 towns here, 12 municipalities, and we want to make sure we're inclusive of all. So we may spend part of the morning in Bayonne and end up in Hoboken for part of the day and then end it in Jersey City. Um, I think that having that sort of on the street component to it, we've been missing. Uh, we've done well with the live stream, but we need to sort of figure out how to get get into it, which just forced us to get more savvy with our technology. But you have just said it, Molly. You know, one of the things I tell all of our partners is that this is the future of all of our businesses. Whether you're a not-for-profit or a for-profit, you have got to figure out how to engage your audience, not, you know, we're so beyond websites and blogs and even Facebook at this point. It's how do you get your audience to know who you are, what you're about, and to actually activate them in some way to do something, whether it's buy a product or give a donation. And um, we're actually, as a chamber, thinking about how can we teach our for-profit members how to, uh, how to be better online and digitally um, because I feel like with this program, we're doing so much to help our not-for-profits, you know, really embrace this space. Um, so, you know, I just can't, I just can't share just how critical I feel that this is. And so, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about all you do for the nonprofits, and you just touched on it again about how, you know, you're, you're working on educating them about how critical it is to learn about these, you know, new resources and tools to help them fundraise. Um, a little birdie has told me that you have been thinking about creating some sort of like nonprofit buddy system. Um, you know, is it too early to kind of like tease, tease that out? Do you want to share with us, you know, some initial thoughts that you have around that for Hudson Gives? 
Sure. So our buddy system, um, we sort of started implementing this last year, but I think we need to formalize it a lot more. You know, one of the things I really enjoy watching about Hudson Gibbs is the fact that the nonprofits who participate, it also provides them venues for getting to know each other. Um, and one of the other issues when we initially brought our nonprofit members together was um, was, was the silos. And I, I think every community has their share of silos where people just put their head down and they're just doing their own job and they don't realize all the amazing partners who are potentially out there for them. I've seen partnerships uh, created and conversations started as a result of folks participating together in Hudson Gives. And I've just seen people who, who you know, they may be development directors and they're just they're like, oh, you're my peer and I can I can pick your brain about something. Um, so one of the things is that uh, that I, we've also seen is those who have now done Hudson Gives for two years, three years, they are getting far more savvy and they do feel like they can share that knowledge with new uh, Hudson Givers. And so we're thinking about how do we sort of formalize this so that they can be sort of onboarding buddies to the new nonprofits and get them up to speed and also sort of teach them that, hey, your first year Hudson Gives may be a challenge. You're not maybe going to raise $50,000. It just doesn't, doesn't magically appear. But if you stick with it and you participate and you're engaged with all of us who are doing it, you'll learn how to continually increase that. So, you know, that's what I'm really hopeful for, that we also create this community. And so the buddy system will be, how do we pair these folks together, give them a bit of a guideline on touching, uh, touch points with their buddy, so to speak, their newbie buddy. Um, and then it creates, it helps to create this larger sense of community among the nonprofits. And I think something too that the buddy system can help create is if you have these uh, more experienced nonprofits who obviously have had success, but, and they're bought into the giving day, just sort of the, the way they approach the giving day and their attitude toward the giving day that kind of like trickles down to all the new people. Cause the first year, right. When you're participating in a giving day, you're not sure. And if you don't find it successful, and like you said, if you don't stick with it, like you could get a lot of drop off, right? But if they have this person that almost, um, I don't want to say holds them accountable. I don't want it to sound that serious, but in a way they have somebody that they can check in with and talk to and relate to. I think that that, you know, can be really valuable. Yeah, especially if it's a small nonprofit and they don't have a lot of staff. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I realize working in a small nonprofit, some of these jobs can be kind of lonely if you don't have a peer to talk to, quite frankly. So mm -hmm. I like the idea that they have a peer that they can touch base with and, and they're not, they're not, you know, we're all in this together in a very mm -hmm. real sense. So Molly, would you like so me to move to the next one? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, jumbled around can. a little bit. Yeah, no, you can we have jumped around. Um, but that's what it's all about. It's about having a conversation. I love it. Um, yeah, Larissa, you can ask sort of our wrap-up question and then I'll give us an outro and we'll be good. Yeah. So Maria, my wise Hudson Gives partner of three years and counting. Um, I would love to know. I mean, we have had some other um one other, I believe, Chamber of Commerce Giving Day come on board. We'd love to see more because I feel like it's just such a uh, a good fit for a giving day, um, having the Chamber Foundation um, put one on. But I would love to know what advice you would impart on other Chambers of Commerce that are thinking of starting their own giving day. So to them, I would say, you know, this is an amazing opportunity to engage with your community. Um, in a meaningful, impactful way. And I know that chambers across the board have struggled um, in the last couple of decades, really, with relevancy, right? Um, if your chamber is a networking organization, there are plenty of other networking organizations out there. If your chamber does advocacy, well, how effective is your advocacy? Maybe your members do it on their own anyway. So there are all these questions we're constantly asking ourselves about our value proposition. And for me, 
you know, Chamber's bottom line is about how do you help make your local economy a better one, a more inclusive one, one that's going to help every uh, possible business uh, get better at uh, finding economic opportunities and raising funds and revenues, et cetera. Um, so for nonprofits, you know, H Hudson Gives Giving Days in general are our solution. And it is a way to position your chamber as being incredibly relevant uh, in a region, um, addressing some critical issues, and it will help you to build a platform. Um, and I think Molly, you, you sort of pointed this out that that it's a way for people to get to know that there's a chamber here and that we're we're doing this type of work and we are very grassroots oriented. Um, you know, your chamber can't just be a grass tops organization and everything is top down. You've got to have programs that allow you to be grassroots and, and bottom up as well. So I would say if, if in particular chambers looking for some ways to really get into their community, address some critical issues and, and really do something that's incredibly relevant, um, you know, a giving day might be a solution for them and they should really, really seriously consider doing it. It doesn't take a lot of resources. I don't have a staff of 10 or 20 or 30. So that is not an excuse. <laughs> oh, well, Maria, I have so enjoyed talking with you and Larissa today. You know, your experience is so valuable. Like you said, you know, it it's just about getting started and about trying something new. And it's really inspiring to hear how you've really been able to generate this community-wide excitement and engagement, this movement during Hudson Gives. And I'm sure that our listeners will be thinking about how to implement some of the fun, creative strategies into their next um, giving day. I'm sure some of our listeners, you know, who are debating on whether they should host their first giving day or not have been inspired. Um, so I just really want to thank you um, and thank you for what you're doing for the Hudson community. Um, you know, we know that these giving days have a power to really bring a lot of impact and um, they couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. Um, and again, thank you, Larissa, for joining us. Um, I know that our partners are very successful because of project managers like you too. Um, for anyone listening today, um, if you're looking for more tools like this to take your digital fundraising strategy to the next level, we invite you to visit our resource library to stay up to date with our podcast, webinars, downloadable content, and more at info.givegab.com slash resources.